all thank you very much for tuning to our channel today today i want to talk a few minutes about uh, warts a very very common condition and uh, you should uh, expect some questions warts are basically verrucous papules they are mostly less than the size of 1 cm and they have a prolonged incubation period up to 2 to 18 months in many patients they spontaneously regress and uh, in some patients they may even uh, become resistant to treatment and in some patients they have, might have recurrence they will get it again and again so let us talk about uh, warts for a few minutes warts are caused by human papilloma virus that is HPV and uh, don't worry about types because we worry, we type HPV only for genital lesions like uh, cervical dysplasia where we uh, describe them as uh, low risk and high risk so in almost all other areas uh, it is caused by HPV and uh, you don't have to worry about the types coming to symptoms and signs they don't cause many symptoms but depending on the region for example plantar warts they can cause pain and tenderness with walking or uh, flat warts are uh, they are uh, uh, they, they can cause some cosmetic problems and uh, periungual warts and uh, warts that come on the beside the nails they can be disfiguring and uh, uh, perianal warts they can uh, uh, inhibit uh, excretory functions so it depends where they are that's the important thing but if they are in some hands or on the on thighs they may not uh, cause any problems so in differential diagnosis remember two things squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma can come as warts can look like uh, warts the other thing is uh, like hypertrophied acne keratosis it can also resemble uh, warts and secondary syphilis we see the condylometa uh, later that is secondary syphilis that can also look like warts so those are a few conditions that uh, we need to remember in the differential diagnosis now a few things about prevention the best thing is avoid uh, 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 the, the for genital warts sexual uh, uh, contact a careful sexual contact and also the vaccine against uh, human papilloma virus for younger women like Gardasil so encourage Gardasil to younger women that saves them from genital warts so that is a basic uh, preventive method but uh, for most patients irrespective of what they do they might uh, get these problems and uh, it's like a cough or cold where the, we get the rhinovirus and in the same way HPV can come in many ways even by body contact so now let's talk about the treatment number one is uh, liquid nitrogen liquid nitrogen and uh, you can uh, take a small uh, uh, flasks of liquid nitrogen and you can uh, apply liquid nitrogen directly on these warts and uh, that liquid nitrogen forms blisters and uh, and uh, causes regression of these lesions and then the cryotherapy and uh, for the surgical treatment uh, for conditions like a condylomata accumulator that's the first line therapy that is cryotherapy so liquid nitrogen number one and then salicylic acid salicylic acid you can apply over these lesions and uh, 40% of salicylic acid, it is known as Mediplast, it works very, very well. And then the podophyllum resin, the podophyllum resin for genital warts, um, the podophyllum resin, it works very well. But podophyllum should not be used in pregnant women, that's an important point. And uh, some people become resistant to podophyllum resin. So salicylic acid, podophyllum, and thirdly, imiquimod. Imiquimod, the 5% uh, concentrated solution, is an excellent for external genital warts. And, uh, and the other advantage is imiquimod is category B, whereas podophyllum is category X. That's why you don't use podophyllum 
in pregnant woman but imiquimod is good so use imiquimod for woman and podophyllum for men that's a good approach to treat the warts because sometimes uh, we forget these uh, pregnancy considerations and blindly prescribe in those cases uh, it could be causing uh, uh, adverse effects on the fetus so imiquimod you can use it in women and then uh, uh, surgical removal using a biopsy, sniping biopsy, you can remove them. And uh, uh, then the laser therapy, CO2 laser, it can uh, uh, remove these lesions and the laser therapy is uh, effective in many, many patients, especially if they have uh, recurrent uh, warts, uh, play whether plantar warts or uh, condylomata cuminata, these agents are good. Then bleomycin, this is immunomodulatory therapy. Bleomycin is uh, also a very, very important uh, uh, consideration. And then uh, squaric acid, squaric acid, and uh, that is also a useful thing. But when you use bleomycin, it can cause Reynolds phenomenon, especially if you use it in uh, uh, digits. If you use it in digits, the words here, it can cause Reynolds phenomenon with the bleomycin. So that's a very, very important point. So basically those are the agents, salicylic acid, podophyllum, and uh, imiquimod, and uh, bleomycin, and uh, squaric acid. Those are the keratolytic agents we use in these patients. Coming to prognosis, Many patients react very well with a few serial. Within a few weeks, many of them respond well. Some patients, unfortunately, do not respond well. And in some others, even they respond well. Within a few weeks, they can get a recurrence of these words. So uh, we can't say who is going to respond and who is going not. So we try these different things, liquid nitrogen and keratolytic agents to give relief uh, from warts and if they are very very large then think of uh, uh, just removing them through a biopsy or uh, CO2 laser those are the important points so basically warts are uh, uh, verrucous papules caused by human papilloma virus and uh, may not cause dramatic symptoms and uh, differential diagnosis is important then treatment is important so I hope you got something. Visit us at uh, usmlevideos.net. Thank you very much. God bless you.